There's something in the human heart that says, a peace on earth, it's not too late, right? The urgency, the desire for peace on earth. And not just a lack of war, but prosperity and flourishing for humankind and for the planet. It is built into us, I believe, built into me, I can say, to desire that, to want that, no matter how much we accept what is. And what is it that creates unity? Who, who of us doesn't pray for an end of war? If you look it up, there are amazing numbers, numbers of armed conflicts in the world today. We hear about ones that are prominent in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine, not the only places. Who among us doesn't desire peace, doesn't des desire unity in the world as it is? And then there's <clears throat> our own personal spheres. Who among us doesn't desire unity in that sphere with the people around us? With our families, our communities, our friends? That desire for unity is there. But how does it happen? It seems so hard to attain. Not that it's never shared among people, but it's something that prevails. Many years ago, emissaries of divine light participated in and then hosted annual human unity conferences. So there were people from all kinds of walks of life, all kinds of paths, religions, East and West, that came together to celebrate hu human unity. And it was at the same time, marvelous and not always so unified <laughs> as it can be when you bring people together from all kinds of places. I believe there was one here in Vancouver, in Boston, in the UK. What is it that creates unity? I think it's elusive as long as the inner factors are ignored. In other words, as long as we're just trying to get people from different cultures together, different religions together, different personalities. Good, good luck with that one, right? Um, just trying to get human personalities together without evoking something more as something inner, an inner sense of connectedness. Whoa, that's hard work. That's hard work. We can't create unity, an experience of oneness, just on an outer basis between us as human beings. Doesn't really work. You can have infatuation on an outer basis, people being infatuated with one another, but that's different. You can have an, a, a momentary attraction or something that goes well between two people or, or some sm small group of people for a time, but something that really prevails among people as an experience of oneness takes something else. In the Christian tradition, there's a prayer in John 17, and it's Jesus's prayer for oneness. It's incredible. It is incredible. The depth of his own heart, and then the revelation of the, the formula for oneness among us. And I'm not going to try to quote it exactly, because sometimes if you quote such things, it just comes like you're quoting the Bible, which uh, not my intent here particularly, but the formula is important. And the formula goes like this, thou and me and I and thee. It starts, it starts with that, thou in me and I in thee. 
Like there's something higher and greater that's that I'm a part of, that's in me, that knows me, as the psalmist said. And I have a growing sense of oneness with that reality, a connection to it. It becomes more and more real. And then the other part of the prayer is, and us in them. I and thee and thou and me and us in them. Because when we're having an experience of communion internally, individually, then there's something to share with the people in the world. 